uh, a 23 years old Hispanic female is admitted to the intensive care unit for fever, headache, and an altered mental status. Her past medical history is unremarkable, and she takes no medications. She does not smoke, drink alcohol, or use rec recreational drugs. World Cup eventually reveals Neisseria meningitis, a positive meningitis with sensitive to amino glycosides. Treatment with gentamicin is okay. Is initiate initiated, and her condition begins to improve. On hospital day seven, she begins to complain of weakness and constipation. Her temperature is seventy. I'm uh, sorry, thirty-seven point three degrees. Uh, pulse is regular at ninety-two. Respiratory rate is seventy-four, and blood pressure is ninety-two over sixty-two. Neurologic examination reveals that her deep tension reflexes are diminished, and all extremities and muscle strength is four over five in her upper extremities and three over five in her lower extremities. Her physician orders serum electrolytes, which were normal on the period days laboratories. And complete blood count, a chest X-ray, X-ray, and electrocardiogram, blood cultures and urine cultures. This patient electrocardiogram is most likely to show which of the following findings: a flattened T wave, b irregularly irregular QRS complexes. Irregularly c, irregular. Good job. C lost a P wave. I'm sorry. Yeah, Wait. loss of P wave. Yeah, good, good. Keep going. What, what happened with the screen? I can see the screen. Uh, Nothing. The screen still no. going. The screen still there. there. Screen oh, still fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened with my hand. <laughs> okay. I, the prolonged. Just come? Okay. Prolonged QT interval. E. Wide QRS complex. Hmm. You know what? It's okay. it's hard <laughs> because um um in the patient with the hypo um plasemia, the ECG indicate with the flattening T wave, unseen P wave, and prolonged QT interval, right? Well, I don't know yet. We need to figure it out. <laughs> it, it's hard. This is also a real case, guy. <laughs> yes, but the blood pressure is. So let's discuss, like let, let the differentiate let's discuss. sign let's discuss. symptoms and so again and sign symptoms. and symptoms. All right, let's let's pick on someone who haven't talked. Uh, when can you point out uh, something fun that is important? And then I'll pick on Lin and Long again. Yeah, you call me right? Yeah, yeah, I call you when. Uh, can you point <laughs> out sign and symptoms? <laughs> Um, uh, I think that um, this patient have a kind of severe infection. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, it's already treated, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and he, she has um a meningitis. Meningitis. Yeah. She is um antibiotic. Yeah. Aminoglycosis. Aminoglycosis. Good. Yeah. And um, she she have a kind of decrease the muscle strength. Okay. Paralysis, right? Cool, good. Decrease muscle strength. Yeah, and also uh, the weakness of um of the muscle. Yeah, weakness and okay. patient. What about her uh, physical exam? Deep tendon reflex? Is that normal? 
Has it diminished in all extremity? Good. What else? Is this an acute or chronic problem? I ask again. Serum electrolyte. The normal. So it's normal the previous day, but yeah. today is not. Acute. So it's a acute problem. Yeah. Blood pressure. Yeah, you're in the hospital for seven days, and suddenly you. It was normal for seven days, and then you suddenly have this problem. So what's on your thought? What was your thought? Uh, let me ask someone. What what. What what their thought is, uh, Long? Uh, can you uh, tell me what you think is happening with these patients? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, she has a uh, abnormal uh, electrolyte. Uh, okay, I think it's a uh, right. uh, hypokalemia. Cause uh, it can make she. Uh, uh, you sure? No, sure. not not absolutely, but uh, I think uh, it's a um, high high specific that she had hypokalemia. Okay, well, uh, let me ask someone else before I give away the answer. Okay, uh, Lynn, what do you think? Uh, are you uh, elaborate on long answer? Do you agree with him or you disagree? It's okay. We we all students here. Just speak your opinions. What did you think? Okay, I mean, I, you know, Greg was sick. Can yeah, so. I agree with him. Okay. Uh, you have your point while you're agreeing with him? Yeah, I think I have the same idea with him. Cool. So, uh, definitely, a patient has some kind of potassium issues. Uh, and it's pointed out by decreased muscle strain and uh, deep tendon reflex are diminished okay so she may have some potassium issues and you say it's hypokalemia right no uh yes okay good uh, what point you to hypokalemia mm, she had a uh, muscle weakness constipation okay. and uh, uh reduce her uh, reflex in a deep tendon so uh, I think it's a sign of uh, okay good all right so let's pick the answer it does tell you is hypokalemia then well but do we know what caused hypokalemia in this case uh, aminoglycoside aminoglycoside good yeah good job do you know the mechanism of why it caused hypokalemia yes I should I just read the um, research okay it's called something called renal tubular acidosis type 1 okay mm. do you know what are the cause of hypokalemia uh, what what are the medication that cause renal tubular acidosis type 1 there's another anti fungus medication I already give the answer <laughs> Amphotericin B. Amphotericin B can also cause hypokalemia. Okay. So, and there's one other antipsychotic, well, not really antipsychotic, there's one psychological medication that causes renal tubular acidosis type 1. Do you know what it is? I think last week when we talked about sodium, we did mention that medication. I mean, not last week, two weeks ago. Patient may have bipolar disorder. And they're on this medication that can cause... They can cause nephrogenic diabetes as well and also can cause renal tubular acidosis type 1. Lithium. So there's two other high yield medication that we use a, a lot of time. Well, amphotericin B, not anymore. Not so much, but lithium, yeah, we still use that. Okay, so what the answer that point you to hypokalemia?
actually I think uh, I uh, choose as a but D can be can be a sign of hypokalemia. Which one? Uh, a is uh, more common, but uh, D can be seen in a uh, hypokalemia. Actually, C does not, not. Yeah, well, C is actually hypokalemia. No, D D D prolonged QT interval. C prolonged QT. Yes. yes. Uh, C is actually hyper. Oh. Uh, D I... D yes, uh, you're right, but that's also other causes that more that can cause prolonged QT as well, like hypocalcemia can also cause it. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. A is A is more correct. More right? correct. Yes. So what's B? What's what's uh what's B? It is uh, fibrillation. A, 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 a fib. Okay. We will dedicate a case talk to AFib in the future because it's very common too. And what about E? It's time the, uh, side of a hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia as well. So these are the couple of findings that you guys should take note. Loss of P-Way and YQRS is actually hyperkalemia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And prolonged QT is a sign of, we, use, we usually okay. associate QT with uh, magnesium or calcium. We rarely use associate with, with potassium, but you're right, it can cause uh, hypokalemia can cause this as well. Uh, what 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 happened if you have a prolonged QT? What what condition is may trigger? What can what condition that a prolonged QT interval can trigger? Anyone know the answer? Medication. Well, well, yeah, I know medication can cause it, but what disorder that it? Let me rephrase my question. If you have a prolonged QT interval for too long, antiarrhythmia class three. What? What can? What it can trigger? Arrhythmia. Well, yeah, it can trigger arrhythmia. Do you know the name of the the disease of prolonged QT? Disease. You know that you Google it, right? Tosa. <laughs> Tosa, Tosa the boy. Or right. Sard the point is what I'm trying to I'm tell. Something. Yeah. yeah. Tosa the point. Okay. It's a very lethal complication of prolonged QT interval. It's Tosar. almost. Yeah. Can you yeah. write it out? Tosa the point. Can you write it out, Tom? Because I don't yeah, have yeah. a. So QT interval prolongation expose patient to arrhythmia, okay, and it causes torsar the point. And do you know what the treatment for torsar the point? Um, Very simple. Shock, magnesium. Shock. Magnesium. Magnesium. Yeah, magnesium will take care of it. Okay. Yeah, that's a treatment. That's a treatment for yeah. to the point. Magnesium. You you don't shock patient when they in a rhythm. Okay. <laughs> but uh, for uh, for the one cup of treatment uh, for antiarrhythmia can make to start points. So do you know that's glass of medication? There's one antiarrhythmic that can cause tosarded points. Is that what the has? Mm -hmm. Do you know what class is it? We only got four class. One, two, three, four. The suggest is class three. Oh, class one can also cause tosarded points. Yes, but class three more important. What's the name? Brocanamide, right? Yeah, brocanamide. Brocanamide can cause tosarded points. And... Uh, What's class three? Well, what's what's the that's famous drug that we use that can cause to start the point? No Amiodarone, right? Yes. Amiodarone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Amiodarone. Yeah, that's a bad drug. 
Pam and Pam um, don't cost a lot of stuff. Yes, but yeah, they... you guys might you, you guys might not know it all. You guys might not learn it yet, but I'm just telling you some facts. But we use amiodarone all the time the in SVT. Uh, America. Yeah, anti SVT. Yeah, we use a tons. There's a lot of drug and costume starter point, but there's like some common one. Cool. Mm -hmm. Any question with uh, this case? No question. Len, mm. you have any question? Concern? You understand stuff? Do you not understand stuff? Uh, actually, I don't understand uh, any other. Amiodarone? Uh, yeah. Why it costs to start the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's what's the mechanism of action of amiodarone? Well, what's the mechanism of action? If you know the mechanism of action, you figure it out. Why it costs prolonged QT? I don't know about the mechanism of the. So the mechanism of uh, amiodarone uh, is is a potassium channel blocker. Okay. So the heart. Uh, I wish I can explain this in physiology, but. Because tomorrow uh, in our class we talk about it, but during the heart cycle, there was a time when the potassium channels opened and all the potassium ions uh, leaking back, well, leaking out of the cells, okay? So what amiodarone does is it block that channel, okay? So the potassium stay inside the cell, which make the cell become more positive. And if the cell become more positive, the action potential is stay on top, and it will cause a prolonged QT interval. So the heart cannot repolarize. If you learn the EKG, there's a repolarization phase where the heart, where the action potential have to be back to negative. Okay, but since the potassium block that chat, the the amiodarone block that potassium channels. Okay. The heart cannot enter the repolarization phase fast enough, so it's causing a prolonged QT interval. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to spend, uh, spend hours talking just on amiodarone. That's how wonderful that drug is. But that's also a really bad drug, so it's going to cost a lot of stuff. Okay? So we have to watch their level, potassium level, when we treat them with amiodarones. Okay. So any question on this? Uh, why amphotericin B ca cause hypokalemia? Well, the, I don't know actually, because they don't know why it is either. If I know, I'll tell you guys. But it's just something that we notice. Okay, most of the stuff in medicine we still don't know. <laughs> like I don't know how all, uh, uh, I don't know uh, why uh, the certain medication work, but it works, so we use it just like that. Good. Are we good? Yes. Everyone good? Yeah. Cool. Let's go down to the next slide. That's where our algorithm is. Beautiful algorithm right here. I try to simplify it as much as I can. On the left side is your hypokalemia algorithm. Okay. Uh, as we can see, that if we have, uh, well, we have to assess the acid base status of the patient as well. Um, if they have less than 50, 15 millimoles in their urine. Okay. And then if they have more than 15, now we have to find out why the potassium is secrete. Is that because they taking their diuretics like furosemide, or is that because they have acid-base issues again? So again, potassium usually hypokalemia is usually related to acid-base, 
and we will have a separate case talk where we talk about acid base okay so this is just for your information you don't have to memorize this this may help you if you own clinicals it may not but uh, don't pay attention too much sorry don't pay attention too much right now it was confusing on the right I wonder if you guys can see it it's uh, hyperkalemia okay mm -hmm. so I just give you all the information but uh, you may not need to pay attention to all of this because I think the, the algorithm in Vietnam is really good too I already check it out okay this is just all the American Academy of Family Physician recommended okay but you always have to base on your clinical decisions. Treat first before we find the cause, okay? If the patient have hypokalemia and you don't treat right away, or hyperkalemia and you don't treat right away, and you just sit there and try to find the cause, they may have arrhythmia and die, and that's maybe too late. So treat first. So do you know how we treat hypokalemia? Replace? Yes. Sodium. Hyper. Hyper. Yeah. Hyper. Sodium. Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm wondering how do we treat hypokalemia? Insulin with glucose? Yes, insulin. Do you know what insulin do? Bring potassium bring from, Transport from the, into the pressure cell. to the cell, right? Yes, but before we give insulin, what else do we need to give first? Glucose. 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 Good, because you don't want the glucose level to drop, and they have. Then we have another whole issue to worry about. What else do we give along with insulin? You know, if they have severe hyperkalemia. Um. We use the um. What we call it? Um, sorbitol. What we use? Um, kias. Kiasolate. Yes. Okay, but do you want to protect the heart as well? Because when you suddenly ship a ton of potassium into the shell, what happened to the heart? Uh, calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate, that's what I'm looking for. You want to use all three, okay? Calcium gluconate, insulin, and chiasolate. Yes. In the patient with severe hyperkalemia. Okay. If you don't give calcium gluconate, uh, you may have an issue later with arrhythmia when the when the patient's potassium suddenly rush into the cells. That will do something to your action potentials. So because when you give calcium, they balance out that phase. If you learn about cardiac uh, action potential, okay, there's a phase where calcium uh, licking out was a phase with potassium licking in that's balanced out and it caused a plateau phase in the cardiac cycle okay so calcium gluconate insulin with glucose and chiaxolate okay that's that's a regimen that we use all the time cool anything else that you guys want to ask me about any question No question. Okay. Well, any concern? Are these cases too hard, too easy? Seems like you guys know the answer already when I say the case. It's probably case too easy. Yeah, you guys are really good. Have a good night. Well, you guys just just smart. Like everybody here is smart. Like. Yeah. Like Long okay. is smart, Lin is smart, Wen is smart, Vang is smart, Pise is smart. No, yeah. no. Everybody is. Hey, you guys go to medical school. You guys are smarter than like sure. five percent of the population in Vietnam. Okay, nobody How can. smart, the intelligent people. Yeah, well, intelligence. You guys have a quality to be a top five percent of the population in Vietnam. Okay. Oh, believe that. 
believe that. He's very school. Yeah, he's smart, smarter. Let than me the tell other. you the mission rate of medical school in America. Uh, let's say my school interview one thousand. Well, not four thousand. Uh, my school received four thousand application every year. They interview a thousand people, and they only pick out one hundred and seventy students. Okay. So it's the same as Vietnam. Vietnam, we don't have that kind of like application stuff, but we just based on score. But I'm telling you something. If I go and take the the test, uh, I'll probably fail. So if <laughs> <laughs> I go to America, <laughs> but yeah, if you go to medical school, you're smart. Trust yourself, okay. Uh, Even yes. if you make a mistake in your clinical judgment, it's okay. We call medicine practice, okay? And the more we practice, the more we perfect. It's mm -hmm. kind of sad to say that we practice medicine to patients, but uh, it's how it is. We're just practicing the science, okay? Say, want to say? We say that medicine is a sign of uncertainty and the so art of probability. We say want to say some things. Yeah, we say say something. Nope. <laughs> no. No. Um, is there any scholarship in Zhitan University for foreign candidate? What? Yeah, you ask. Is yeah, is there any scholarship for available a for available That's for um foreign candidate from Sweden University. I mean the, the Oh, you yeah. ask Lin? You should ask. Yeah, yeah, did they ask Lin? Yes, I'm asking Lin. I'm asking Lin. <laughs> okay, let me answer the question. <laughs> well, sorry, I thought you asking me because I don't know stuff about that. Uh, so you want to ask about the scholarship of Sweden University? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when we um when we finish the uh, the test and the uh, we come to the uh, university and if we have a high score and we um it's based no, I mean, on I mean, the I mean for the foreigner like me. Uh yes, it has many it has many uh, policy areas for the foreigner. So what what's your main major? Um, um, it means that you should MD? interview by yourself. You should interview by yourself MD? a little bit because she, she didn't yeah, know about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, interview by yourself for her. Let's her know what, what who you are. Uh, um, I am from Cambodia, and uh, I'm studying um the last years of the MDs in Taiping University. Taiping Medical University. Yes, Taiping Medical University, and I I, I just want to know that um, if the Zhitan University has available scholarship for their um, foreigner student, so I will tell the freshmen, like I will tell the people in Cambodia that ah, uh, there has a scholarship which is a um, one of one of the one of the, one of the popular um, medical university in Vietnam. So, yeah, something like that. Okay. Because um, in typing, in typing, they 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 study all the things in Vietnamese, right? Yeah, yeah. and in in Sweden, yes, they study for seven years, but they use English. So. If we study in the Sweden University, when we graduate, we come back to Cambodia. Yes, it's it's like um, it is easier because in Cambodia they use um, French or English when they work together. They don't know Vietnamese, right? So it, yes, it is hard for me. Like me, it is hard because when I back to Cambodia, I will use English. Of friends, so Vietnamese, I can. Yeah. 
talk about yeah. smart nature is a uh, dog have um, many policy around nature. We have um, we focus on English in the first years, but uh, in uh, the the next year.